tuning in. Today, we are going to tackle something that I have had kind of on my radar for the last several weeks. So I love watching YouTube videos. I love watching vlogs. I love watching DIYs. Literally, so much fun and gives me so much inspiration of things that I want to do. And I found a bunch of videos of people doing like hacks, pottery barn hacks or restoration hardware hacks and what came up were vases and vessels and distressing them and DIYing them to make them look aged and I thought, oh, I can do that and I loved the way that these things were coming out. So. That's what we are going to tackle today. So let me show you what I have here. If you've watched any of my vlogs, you know that I got some of this stuff at Michael's, some of this I got at Walmart, but I'm very, oh, and the table you would have saw, uh, I got thrifting and it was 30 bucks, 20 bucks? No, $30 I think. And it is just an old ratty table, but it is counter height. It is basically here in my laundry room <laughs> on cue. This is what I've got to work with. I'm thinking that we're going to start with this vase right here. I don't know what it's going to look like. We're going to see is this easier than it looks? Is it harder than they make it look? Because I'm telling you, these girls made it look so easy. So I've got some joint compound. I've got a whole bunch of chalk paint in just a bunch of different colors. We've got some sponges, some brushes here, lots of just different things to kind of play around with. I did get these brushes. I don't know that I'll use them for this project, but they are here. I actually needed to restock those right there. But I'm really excited to see how this comes out. We're going to start with joint compound and I'm just going to go ahead and rub it all over this because even though this face is very pretty, I don't really like the colors. I think the shape of it is awesome and exactly what I'm looking for, but I want it to be white and well, maybe not just white, but kind of like an aged cream color is what I am going for. But you know what, to be honest, I might change my mind as I get into it. We'll just have to see. How cool does that look? This is gonna be fun. I don't know why I'm feeling so nervous, but you know what? Let's just, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go. We're just gonna do it. is good I don't know I think I put enough on let me just kind of fix where I was holding it and so that it's not as thick in some places and you know what I'm okay with that let's leave it see how this dries I know I'm gonna end up taking sandpaper to it and then we can kind of figure out like what happens when you do a little bit less? What happens when you do a little bit more? I don't know. But that was fun. That was actually a lot of fun. See, and then you could just do this for like days. Because what's really cool about it is there's no like right or wrong. It just is. You just get to be like creative. 
Whoops, I took a little bit too much off. See, I need to stop playing with it. <laughs> okay, let's leave it. This is what we've got. It's almost like frosting, like cake frosting. <laughs> it's so cool. I will say that was a whole lot of fun. So this is supposed to take a couple hours, I believe a couple of hours to dry. Let's see. So it goes on pink, obviously, and it is supposed to dry white. So we'll know when it's dry, when it's white. So this is what we've got for now. I went ahead and did a little bit of the inside just because, but we'll see. In some places you can see where it's really thin and in other places it's really thick. So we're just gonna have to kind of play it by ear, see how this dries up. But I do love this texture. And then we'll sand it down and get a little bit of like the rough stuff off. And then we'll go from there. All right, hurry up please, please dry quickly. So this is about an hour later. We got some time. <laughs> I'm probably gonna come back to this tomorrow. This is the next day. We are nice and dry. And you guys, I love the way this looks. Oh, honestly, I don't really want to do all that much to it, but I have all this stuff. <laughs> I'm unsure because I really like the way this looks. So here's what I'm going to do. There are pieces that can be kind of roughed or they're a little bit rough so I want to make sure that I get those off so I do have sandpaper here but it's what grit is this 150 grit I think it might be too much so we're just gonna take it out back and we're, we're gonna use it well let's just see what happens but honestly I love the way this looks I do have different colors of spray paint so I I was thinking this color right here but I don't know let's go ahead sand it up and let's just see what it looks like after so you can see how like some of it, I didn't get all of it. So I do think we're definitely gonna need to um, spray paint it. But then I'm also wondering if maybe I just darken like the bottom part to make it look like actually aged. Maybe get some dirt in there, some brown paints to make it look like that. I think that's what we'll do, but yeah, this is good. What a fun project. And what's really cool is even if you didn't like it to be so textured like this, you really can take a lot of that off and smooth it out. I'm finding that I can really get it smoothed out if I really wanted to. I don't want that look though. So I'm just kind of getting off the extras. We're good. Like I said earlier, over the last several weeks, I've been watching a lot of like DIYs on how to age vases and vessels. And this is actually, I think the perfect texture to use what a lot of people, where they use dirt or coffee grounds or cocoa powder, but I, I don't really want to do that, but I feel like if I were to, this would be a perfect texture to do that. But I think I'm going to go with the paint. I don't know. I wish I could get your opinions right away. Because <laughs> I'm kind of thinking maybe dirt is the way to go. Let's try it. Let's try dirt. We can always come back with paint if we want to. Let's try dirt and just see what happens.
Okay, so you can see that I've actually rubbed off some of the plaster, like right here. But I'm pretty sure I can fix that with paint. I went a little bit too ham <laughs> on that dirt. But look at this. This is what I'm going for. Oh my gosh, I absolutely love that. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna spray it. I'm gonna seal what's on here. I'm gonna seal this in with the top coat and then I'm gonna paint. I think that's the way to go, but I love how this is coming out. This is so cool and so fun. We're back inside. This is now dried. Everything is sealed in. You can see you can't rub off any of that dirt. So this right here, that's what I'm looking for. I love this. We've got a little bit of fixing to do, like the plaster came off here. And what I realized was obviously the thicker it is, the more it's gonna stay on there because I didn't do a super, super thick coat, especially up here. So something to think about and consider. I'm gonna try and somehow disguise that <laughs> with some of these paints. I've got my plates here. I've got sp the stipple brushes here. We've got our sponges. I've got some water, paper towels, and we're just gonna go for it. I'm excited. So my goal is I want the base to be a lot darker and kind of just transition up like it is, but darker on the bottom and then same for up top. And then we gotta try and fix some of these because in a few different places, you can kind of see that it's a lot thinner where I didn't go really heavy with the joint compound. But yeah, I really love the way it looks. And to be super honest, I could just leave it like this and call it a day and it's gorgeous and beautiful, but I just wanna do a little tiny bit more, see if we can get it a little bit more ombre, and I wanna bring some of this color down here. I just feel like the paint, I'll have a lot more control of what that final look will be rather than using dirt, but I don't know, we'll see. Let's just play around and see what we get. So I've got the mineral here for just kind of hoping that I can cover those up. And then just, I don't know, we'll see. We're gonna mix and match and blend and see what colors we can make. So this Merlot is one of my absolute favorite colors in the whole wide world. So I don't know, I kind of feel like that's just what I need. <laughs> that's just what I need. And then the ink is just to darken that bottom. I'll use it on the rim and maybe even to darken up this truffle color. And yeah, okay. My daughter's texting me. <laughs> that was my phone, not yours. I started going in with the lighter colors that I had. I couldn't match it perfectly, but that's okay. You'll see here in a second, it didn't even matter. But I will say, oh, and I had to put down extra paper because the plaster that was from the day before was kind of like sticking to the paint as I was painting. So we ended up putting down a new sheet. But here's the thing, I honestly should have just stopped right here. This looked so good, just getting that darker on the bottom. I love how I was able to ombre it up and it looked absolutely beautiful. And this actually was what I was going for. However, I then added that red, the wine color and absolutely loved it. So I decided on a different spot for the vase. You'll see where it ends up here at the end. And what's super cool is that if for whatever reason you decide that you totally don't like how it's coming out, not a big deal. Spray paint it, start all over again. Easy peasy. Okay, so here is all the paint that I was using. Clearly, I used, I poured out way too much paint. I did not need this much. 
I used this right here the entire time. I did use the paintbrush just a little bit to kind of get into some of the nooks and crannies, but these are the colors that I used and I love it. Like, I love the way it came out. I think the texture is beautiful. I think the dimension is wonderful. I love the dark colors. There were some parts, like this part right here, where I took my sponge and I kind of ran it across rather than dabbing. Every other place is pretty much just dabbing like this, and I love that. Like, these are my favorite parts. On the other side over here, and you can see a little bit of that magenta color right down in there. Love that. You can kind of see it a little bit better up here too. But so the dabbing, I like the way that this looks so much better. And this was more of going straight across. Now, this is going to be good for when I do the other vases where I want it to be just one color all the way around because it gives it a little bit less dimension, like there is dimension there, but it is more of a solid color. Whereas this on this side, you can kind of see that there's a little bit more texture in there. It gives it a little bit more depth, which I love. I love it. So the other thing is obviously, I went for the darker look. I just really liked the way that all of this was coming out. So I just went with it. I have a lot of other vases that I will keep just white, but this will have to just be an accent piece. And I'll show you what I mean by that. I wanted a bunch of like white things on here. I love that contrast. And this one, we're gonna get up here. And you can see that it's got, it's gonna be surrounded by white which is gonna be awesome. Like this one right here, we're probably gonna do that all white. And what I had started to do with the brown on the bottom and just kind of zhuzh it up towards the top and ombre it, that's gonna be mostly white. So I think this right here next to it with other white things I think is gonna bring that pop of color, which is gonna look amazing. But yes, yes, love. This is where I have it for now, just as I get those done, which will be really, really soon. But for now, I've got it here, and you can see how this is like that red that I was kind of trying to emulate. We've got that in here as well, so I like how that is just kind of paired together. But I'm having a hard time figuring out what I want in the vase, and I don't know, then I'm thinking, does it even need something? But yes, yes it does. So we're just gonna play around with a bunch of different moments and see which one we like best. I've decided on this one. The other ones, they either just weren't the right like size or there's a different kind of green, I don't know. This I think just looks the absolute best for these colors. And this is just kind of a holding place for this vase anyways. So I think it looks absolutely beautiful. So the rest of the pots that I do will be a little bit more like this color, this texture, more white. This didn't come out at all what I had envisioned. It kind of just took on a life of its own and I started to really like what I was seeing. So I thought, you know what? I'm just gonna go with it and yeah. I'm really happy with how it came out and I can't wait to do more of these. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you've not subscribed, I'd love it if you did. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.